Hello, watchers of videos of history. I hope this one's mildly entertaining. If it's not, well, life will go on, I suppose. All right, we're looking today at the Phoenicians, the ancient Phoenicians. And specifically, we're looking at trade of the Phoenicians uh, and foreign relations. We're not really going to be focusing on the alphabet, nor uh, purple dye. So if you're looking for either of those, I'm sorry. And that's for another time. Students will be talking about those in the next couple days. However, we're going to be looking mostly at trade ships and that for this video. So Phoenicians, as I have mentioned in class, or if you are asleep, uh, I will mention now, the Phoenicians were great traders. They established a, uh, a series of colonies throughout the Mediterranean, namely in the southern border of the Mediterranean, uh, and lasted from about 1500 BC to about 500 BC. So they're pretty uh, solid uh, length. I'd call it an empire. Um, so the Phoenicians last for about a thousand years, and namely it's because of their ships. So Phoenicia, as I have mentioned, and will mention again on this map, it is on the far eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, in red over there, is a set of cities known as Phoenicia, north of Jerusalem and ancient Israel. So Phoenicia, home base was over there, but as you can see, as you go west in the Mediterranean, uh, Phoenicia established a series of cities and colonies throughout, uh, namely to help in their trade. So the Phoenicians, uh, had extensive territory. However, this is actually what we think of when we say Phoenicia as a place. So merchant ships, when it came to the Phoenicians, since they had a great deal of power from trade, uh, their ships had to carry a lot of goods. So the ships themselves are pretty round, uh, kind of bathtub ship. You have one mast in the center of the ship, which when the wind was good, the ships could travel solely by the wind. Um, however, if the wind shifted or the winds died altogether, um, there were oars in which the crew could row and keep the ship going, keep those goods traveling throughout the Mediterranean. Um, so since the ships are very wide, uh, rounded ships, they don't do too well in turbulent water, so the ships tended to stay close to the shore. And since the ships are pretty big and wide, that means they can fit more goods in them, allowing for more trade. Of course, it is not simply economics that give a nation power, but also military might. And the Phoenicians had superior technology when it came to warships as well. And with the warships, the Phoenicians uh, created something that became known as the Byreme, B-I-R-E-M-E. -E. And these Byremes, the idea of it is there are two rows of oars. So there are two levels in which people could be sitting and rowing the ship, which would give it great power in speed, um, and you'd have a great deal more of people on the ship as well. So. To establish so many far-flung colonies, you need to first get those colonies, so the Phoenicians were able to exert their will to create these colonies in foreign lands, but also to keep them safe uh, and keep them strong. So this ability to create some big ships, uh, certainly the ships in this, these images don't have sails, uh, and certainly many didn't, but also they have ships with sails in addition to all of these rowers. So the Phoenicians use these powerful uh, Byremes to keep control of their territories and keep control of their trade. Religion-wise, since Phoenicia is spread out over such a large territory of land, they have a very uh, kind of diverse religion. They are polytheistic, so they have many gods, uh, many deities, so you have gods of nature and religion and fertility. Um, and you have, certainly have a lot of 
gods the Phoenicians adopt from other places. Uh, you have Osiris from the Egyptians. Um, so they kind of take a bit from different religions around the Mediterranean to adopt as their own. These are three uh, gods of the Phoenicians. If you notice the god on the far left, um, which is the fertility god, the nature goddess, uh, the symbols on her dress are swastikas. And no, she is not a Nazi. Uh, the swastika is, has been a, a long-lasting symbol throughout the world, especially in Middle Eastern religions. Um, the Nazis simply adopted a symbol that had existed for a very long time, thousands of years actually, for their own. <clears throat> so uh, while this woman does have the swastika, uh, she is, we can assume, a pretty good goddess uh, and is not advocating for the slaughter of millions. But religiously, uh, the Phoenicians didn't really have many things super unique. They kind of adopted from all over. And especially, they were good at adopting from the Greece, or the Greeks. And if you look at this map, the uh, Phoenicians, the blue territory is theirs. The Greeks, on the other hand, had the green territory. So both uh, empires spread out over a great deal of land, had exerted their power uh, immensely throughout the Mediterranean. And when there are two main powers, certainly there's a lot of good things. Um, there's a great deal of trade between the Greeks and the Phoenicians, so exchanging of ideas and goods. Uh, the Greeks and the Phoenicians have a great deal when it comes to mythology that are similar, uh, namely Phoenicians adopting from Greek mythology and symbolism. Um, and especially the alphabet, which we'll get into more, the Greeks really start to perfect and figure out the alphabet, which the Phoenicians develop uh, to make it even better than it was. However, such with having two major powers in one area does not usually last too long. And the fall of the Phoenicians started with this fellow on the left, Cyrus the Great, who is the Persian king. Uh, he conquers Phoenicia uh, in 536 BC, and shortly thereafter, the Greeks conquer Tyre on the right. This is an image of the Greeks conquering Tyre um, shortly thereafter. So, sorry, 539, the Cyrus the Great conquers uh, Phoenicia, and then in 332, the Greeks kind of finish them, finish them off with Alexander the Great, who we will get into in about two weeks as well. So the Phoenicians fall, uh, and their far-flung trading empire is over. <laughs>